You are now listening to episode 21 of the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. In this episode, he covers his top three tips for weight loss. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com. All right, welcome to the Real Health Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, coming to you live from Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm the owner and operator of Align Utah, uh, Salt Lake City's premier wellness clinic focusing on structural corrective chiropractic care, functional nutrition, and really looking at things through the five essentials of maximized living, which are looking at your mindset, looking at your spine and your nervous system, Uh, Looking at your nutrition, the foods that you're putting in, your exercise, and your toxicity, detoxing and minimizing your exposure to toxicity. And today, I want to talk to you about possibly the most popular uh, health topic that's out there today, and, and that is the topic of weight loss. Okay, so everybody wants to lose weight, it seems like. And, you know, that's a big deal because, you know, we're now actually the second most obese country uh, in the world. Mexico actually passed us up recently, but we're the most overweight. And it's literally over two thirds of our population. And, you know, we see it everywhere. We hear the stats, we know that it's happening. And we know about the things like, you know, avoiding fast food. And and we know that we should get up and we should exercise and we should eat, you know, more salads and and maybe we should cut back our calories. And, And so many people are misinformed and think that they should be drinking diet Coke and, and things like that. And that's just couldn't be further from the truth. But what I want to talk about today are the top three tips for weight loss, the top three tips for hormone-based weight loss. A, a couple of years ago, we did a seminar called Hormone-Based Weight Loss and did a weight loss challenge with it. And if you follow us you know, on, online, you, know, you can get on our YouTube channel and look at some of the testimonials from, from our clinic, and you'll see one of the recent ones is a patient who her and her husband together have lost over 100 pounds, well over 100 pounds between the two of them. Uh, another one is another couple. They're 80 years old and 80 85 years old, and they've lost uh, pushing 50 pounds between the two of them. I think they're over 50 pounds now between the two of them in their 80s. And so we see great results with weight loss. But you know, how do we how do we achieve those results? What are people doing that get those results? Because everybody knows there's no shortage of diet books, there's no shortage of programs that you can buy, there's no shortage of, of pills that you can buy that are going to boost your metabolism or belts that you can wear that are going to shake your fat off and you know there's there's all kinds of gimmicks and things out there but what is what can you really do real life what's applicable to actually lose weight okay and so we're not going to get too much into the mechanisms and things but I want to give you just the three biggest action steps the three biggest things that everybody should be doing if weight loss is a goal okay And the first one might be kind of obvious, but the first one is you have to change your diet, okay? You have to change your diet, and you have to watch the foods that you're putting in your mouth. You know, there's a couple things that you can learn about, you know, the way in which you're eating. But the first thing is you just have to look at what you are eating. And if you go back into the archives of the podcast, you can find detailed information on this. We have a total food makeover episode. We have a uh, a total food makeover episode focusing on sugar, one focusing on fats, one focusing on protein. But you have to look at the foods that you are putting in your mouth. That's got to be number one, okay? So I'm going to give you a couple rules that have to take place. They absolutely have to take place. They're absolutely necessary, okay? So the very first rule is you have to decrease or completely eliminate sugar, okay? And so many of us have heard this before. We have to get rid of sugar. We have to get rid of sugar. But if I came into your life and I watched you for a day or I sent you home with a food journal and you filled it out, you'd still be shocked at how many grams of sugar you're taking in because they sneak it in everywhere. So you have to watch your sugar. A couple of the themes that we're going to talk about are turning your body in from a sugar burner 
into a fat burner. And if you want your body to become a fat burner, you have to stop feeding it sugar. So go back into the archives of the podcast. You can go, you know, if you're just hearing this for the first time, you can find it on www.realhealthwithdrtaylor.com or you can download it on iTunes. But listen to the Total Food Makeover episode and listen to the couple episodes on sugar. I think there's one or two episodes on sugar just alone. Okay, so we're talking about the obvious ones like your candies, your sweets, your sodas, things like that. You, you know, you have to eliminate those. Those should be, you know, no, no brainer that we got to get rid of those. Okay, just straight up, just get rid of them. Okay, so switch to water, um, no candy, you know, just get, get rid of those. But also some of the hidden sources are things like, you know, even uh, a marinara pasta sauce will have added sugar in it. Ketchup will have added sugar in it. Um, you're going to be looking at your breads and your grains. You know, you might say, oh, I'm eating no sugar, but yet what are you having for dinner? You're having spaghetti or what are you having, you know, for breakfast? You're having a, a blueberry yogurt and thinking that yogurt is good because it's good for your gut health and it's got probiotics and you saw, you know, a commercial about it, but it's loaded with sugar. So you got to become you got to become a label reading ninja. You got to be able to read your label, know where those sugars from. And you got to get rid of those sugars. That's step number one within your diet. And step number two within your diet, equally as important. We want people implementing these two steps together at the same time. It's not one and then the other, but it's both of these two steps at the same time. You got to starve your body of sugar while fueling your body with fats. Okay, and I'm going to say that again, which because some, some of you have never heard this before. This is your first time tuning in. You've got to starve your body of sugar, and you've got to fuel your body with fats. Okay, so fat has gotten a bad rap in the last you know, 30 to 40 years. But nowadays, you know, people are starting to, to learn and hear that fats are actually incredibly necessary and extremely important. You know, they're essential to every process in your body. They make up your cell membranes. They make up about 70% of your brain. And in order to become a fat burner, you have to teach your body how to burn fat. And in order to teach it how to burn fat, you got to give it some fat to burn. Okay, so we talk about in those past podcast episodes, like I mentioned, we talk about, you know, throwing sugar on your uh, as your fuel is like throwing sticks and twigs onto a fire. You know, it's going to work. It's going to burn as fuel, but it, you're going to have to throw it on all the time. You're going to have to keep refueling. That's why you go through ups and downs and sugar cravings, and every two hours you're hungry. Whereas when you turn your body into a fat burner, you're going to be able to go for a longer fat. You get more than twice as many calories from fat than you get from sugar or from proteins. So add in those good fats. That's like throwing a big log on the fire. You're going to have energy for a long time. Your metabolism is going to keep going and it's going to be kickstarted and it's going to burn fat. You're going to teach your body how to burn fat and weight is going to come off. It's also going to re it's a, it's going to help regulate your hormones. Okay, by decreasing sugar, it's going to help regulate, you know, hormones like insulin. Also by these two changes, it's going to help increase your, you know, your insulin sensitivity, but also your leptin sensitivity. Leptin is the most important hormone for burning fat. And your leptin sensitivity gets burned out just like your insulin sensitivity does. And your body doesn't burn fat. So making these two changes, cutting out sugars, increasing good fats is going to change your hormones. It's also going to fix your ghrelin. Ghrelin levels, that's the the hunger hormone, uh, which is going to, it's going to increase your ghrelin levels, and that reduces overeating, okay? So those three hormones, insulin, ghrelin, and leptin together. Also, you could lump cortisol in there. Cortisol is one that we've talked about the past few times with stress hormones, but those four hormones are going to determine how much fat you're depositing, how much fat you're carrying, and how much fat you're burning. So decrease the sugars, increase the good fats, couple other things to just throw in there about your diet is, you know, you got to decrease the toxins. You got to eat unprocessed, real foods, whole foods. Once again, go back in the archives, listen to those episodes, learn about those things toxicity wise. But if you just start with those two steps, you decrease your sugars, you eliminate your sugars, you go on what's called a ketogenic diet, you eliminate your sugars, and you eat a high fat diet, 
you teach your body how to become a fat burner, okay? So those, and those high fats, once again, are just things like avocados, things like nuts and seeds. Coconut products are probably the best example. You know, you can have a coconut product with almost every meal of the day. Uh, there's a ton of them out there nowadays especially. But increase those good fats. Also, your grass-fed beef, your salmon, your fish. And then even, you know, things like your supplements, like your omega-3 fatty acids, your fish oils, uh, things like that are going to increase your good fats, train your body to be a fat burner, not a sugar burner. So step number two is, you know, another one that, you know, is pretty obvious, really, you know, it's exercise, okay? You got to move, okay? Everybody, we were designed to be moving. And, and not only like walking and moving, walking does not count as exercise. Walking is just movement. You know, everybody should be getting seven to 10,000 steps a day. And that's that's just uh, bare minimum. And I think that an exercise program, a resistance training or some kind of surge training or some kind of, some kind of cardiovascular workout on top of that is absolutely necessary and for everybody, for general health, but especially if you're trying to lose weight. If you're trying to lose weight, it's a non-negotiable, okay? Now, when I'm talking about exercise, I'm talking about anything, okay? So, you know, getting on a treadmill, uh, getting on a bike, going biking, going walking, taking the stairs instead of taking the escalator or the elevator, all these things are great. But if you want to burn fat the most effectively and you want to lose weight the quickest, the best way that I have seen is through surge training. Okay, so through surge training or burst training, we call it, that actually teaches your body, once again, how to burn fat and build muscle more efficiently and effectively. And the way that it does it is by changing, once again, changing some hormones. Okay, so, you know, that's a recurrent theme that your hormones control a lot of your metabolism and a lot of your health outcomes. And there are ways that you can change those hormones to work in your favor, okay? And so by changing your exercise to doing the surge training, you're going to retrain your hormones. You're going to boost your HGH, your human growth hormone, and your testosterone, which are two hormones which actually help your body burn fat and build muscle. Both of them help burn fat and build muscle. And, you know, sometimes people will say, well, you know, HGH and testosterone, you know, I'm not, I'm not a professional baseball player. You know, I'm not an NFL player. I'm not trying to, to get buff or anything. But no, those are necessary hormones that all of us have. And HGH is not only responsible, you know, it's human growth hormone. It's responsible for growth. It's responsible for muscle development, lean muscle mass. But it's also really great and known for just keeping you young. So when your HGH levels go down, and, and that doesn't mean go out and supplement with it artificially by any means, because that does not keep you young. That's going to age you really quick because it's going to throw off other hormones. But when you can boost your body's natural production of HGH, it's literally going to slow down the aging process. So what does it look like to do surge training or burst training? Well, you can do a quick Google search, a quick YouTube search, and you can find a lot of examples out there for this. You know, a lot of doctors have programs out there. Dr. Mercola has his program. Dr. Axe has his program. We have ours called Max T3, which stands for time, tempo, and type. You got to have the right type of exercise. You got to be going at the right tempo for it to be surge training, and you got to do it for the right amount of time. And the research on this, you know, there, there's research that shows that this, this is also called a Tabata style exercise. Uh, named after Dr. Tabata in Japan. And they've shown that Tabata can actually change these hormones in as little as four minutes of exercise, okay? But you got to push yourself to exhaustion to get those results. But that's all the time that it takes. But what we do in our office is we do it at 12 minutes. I'd say that 12 to 20 minutes is what I have found to be the most effective. And now we do 12 minutes, but if you're looking to, to lose weight and lose it quick, you could bump that up to 20 minutes. And there's a um, ton of ways that you can do this, okay? So uh, Tabata sometimes can be seen as, you know, like 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off. We do 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. That is a tempo that I have found or we have found through Maximize Living, but I've also found here in the office that works the best for every 
uh, athletic group. We've had people here in our workout class that we do every Saturday morning. We've had advanced athletes here. We've had college level athletes here and we've had people in their 80s come to this class. We've had people in their 400 pounds. We've had people, you know, under 6 years old come and do these workouts and what you do is you go as hard as you can. You push yourself as close to exhaustion as you can for 20 seconds and then you stop. You rest for 20 seconds. You catch your breath. You, you catch your heart rate back just a little bit, but you, you regain that composure a little bit, then you go hard again. You do 20 seconds again. You can do 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. You can do 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. You can do minute on, minute off. That's a really tough one. Our DVD that we sell here in the office, it has two discs on it. One disc has 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. The other one has minute on, minute off. But if I'm doing like, you know, if I'm say I'm on a treadmill, uh, what I would do is surge 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Mostly because once you get working hard, it's hard to keep count if you're doing weird numbers. I've tried to do 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off, things like that. You lose count once you start, you know, getting into that, that zone where you feel like you're going to pass out uh, and you're pushing yourself to exhaustion. The goal here is to get your heart rate up into its target zone up close to your max and then come down. So it's called surging because it goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up and then it goes down and then it goes up and then it goes down. Your heart rate does, your lung rate does, your metabolic rate does. And this conditions your body to not only get better physical fitness, better cardiovascular fitness, you know, as a result of this, you get better cardiovascular fitness, your heart beats harder, your lungs breathe better, more efficiently. But then it changes those hormones to help your body burn fat and build muscle. The other thing that does it is resistance training. Okay, so resistance training also will burn fat and build muscle by boosting HGH and testosterone. But what it, and that's like lifting weights, but what it doesn't do do is it doesn't get the same cardiovascular results. It doesn't burn as many calories as surge training as doing like a full body exercise like burpees or jumping jacks or we do a lot of squat jacks. We do air squats. One of our favorite ones that we do almost every weekend we call it touch the ground, touch the sky. And you can modify that, you know. So we have people that come in that have hip or knee replacements. They'll do touch your thigh, touch the sky and they won't leave the ground when they touch the sky. Uh, kids are be slapping the ground and exploding up into the sky. Older people maybe touch their shins, touch the sky. And just down and up, down and up, but that full body exercise really gets you up into that target heart rate zone in those 20 seconds. Then you get 20 seconds of break. And what we do is we repeat that three times in our office. So we do one exercise three times, and then we have six different stations. So that's just one way of doing it. But do a quick Google search or do a quick YouTube search. Or if you're in Salt Lake, come join us at the office. Come buy a DVD. Come to the Saturday morning workout. Check out, you know, we have some YouTube videos of, uh, you know, just some information on those workouts. You know, we've had as many as 30 people here out in the parking lot doing these workouts together. And it's a lot of fun. Um, and you also see that, you know, it could be modified for any level of athlete and you're going to get the same quality results. And whether your result is you want to burn fat or say you're an athlete and you want to build muscle, the exercise, these exercises are the most effective way to do that. So you got to be surge training if you want to lose weight. That's number two. Diet number one, change your diet, decrease your sugars, increase your fats, and then surge train. Those two things together, those two things are going to help your body burn fat and build muscle. And those two things alone are typically enough, okay? Those two things, I've seen incredible, incredible weight loss results from those two things alone. People losing triple digits, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds all the time, over 100, a couple times. Uh, and, you know, really typically, you know, 10 to 15 pounds in the first month of doing this is not uncommon. So that's what you can expect if you really stick with this for a month. I would say 10 to 15 pounds. You stick with it for two months, uh, 20 to 25 pounds. Very, very possible. We've seen it all the time. The last one I want to talk about is, you know, really what you can do if you know, those two things just aren't working. Or maybe they worked and then you plateaued. There, there's a couple things that we want to look at. One is toxicity. Okay, so toxicity is a huge one. So you got to look at, at your toxins. But another one that you can do that's really, really effective 
for weight loss uh, without, which is actually going to help stimulate your body's detoxing, is change the way that you eat your meals. Okay, so we've heard for so long maybe that that you should spread your meals out, eat six small meals in a day, keep your metabolism going and burning it at all times, uh, and I'd say that that couldn't be further from the truth. So once you've switched to a low sugar, uh, low carb, high fat diet. What you want to implement if you want to continue losing weight is called intermittent fasting. And, you know, I had a patient recently who, and this is her exact story, you know, she's had incredible results. I don't remember the exact number of medications that she's gotten off of, but it's in the double digits that she's gotten off of. She's still on several, and she's still on three or four whose side effects our weight gain. And she's she's not happy about her, her weight loss because it plateaued at a certain point. Even though she's eaten a really clean diet, she's exercised, she's minimized her toxins, she's gone organic, she's done so many things that are helping her overall health, but she wants to lose weight. And so she started implementing intermittent fasting. And there's a lot of ways that you can do intermittent fasting. So we're going to do a whole episode on intermittent fasting, but the way that I'm most familiar with and the way that I've found to be most effective is called the 16 and 8 rule, okay? And so that means out of every 24 hours of the day, you only eat for eight of those hours, okay? And so what that looks like is you skip breakfast, basically, and you want to exercise in the morning on an empty stomach. And that's hard for some people to grasp their head around. Usually after doing it a couple times, you get used to it and your body uh, accommodates to it and you can handle that. But so say you skip breakfast, you might eat breakfast at 10 a.m., okay? And so then the 16 and 8 rule is you only eat your three meals. You can eat the same amount of calories, that you normally eat, but you pack them into those eight hours. So you eat breakfast at 10 a.m., say you eat lunch at 1 a.m., and then you eat dinner at 6 p.m., and then you're done for the night. So you eat all your day's calories within those eight hours. And what this does is it really kickstarts your metabolism and helps your body lose weight faster. In fact, research has shown that you lose weight faster even if you're eating the same amount of calories. Okay, so this is incredibly, incredibly important because, you know, we've heard for years that it's calories in versus calories out, which is, you know, definitely your calories matter to some degree. But what matters more is your hormones like insulin, like cortisol, like ghrelin, like leptin and the way that you're eating your food. So a couple things that intermittent fasting is going to do is going to speed up your weight loss. It's going to improve your detox, improve your digestion by giving your digestive system a break. It's going to help your body uh, increase its sensitivity to leptin and to insulin, okay? So you're going to become less insulin and leptin resistant. It can even give you a healthier brain, especially along with when you, you, know, you pair this with this ketogenic diet of low carb, no carb, no sugar, and high fat. When you pair these two together and you add in the surge training, weight is going to fall off. And so this patient who was, you know, frustrated with her weight loss, she came into the office recently and she said that she's, you know, done this or implemented this and she's lost seven pounds right away. And seven pounds, you know, might not sound like a lot to you, but that's a huge number for somebody that's been fighting for their weight loss for a long time. Okay. And so that's taken her, you know, almost a year. She's lost 15 to 20 pounds. And now she's lost seven pounds right away with the same amount of calories, eating the same foods, but just changing the way that you eat them. Okay, you can you can do that the same way. You know, you could say you want to skip breakfast completely and just eat lunch and dinner. So you eat lunch at at noon and then you eat dinner at seven o'clock at night and then you're done. You're just eating all your calories. You're getting your fill, but you're just eating a big lunch and a big dinner and fasting in between. That's why it's called intermittent fasting. You're not doing a full fast, you know, 10 day fast or anything like that. You're intermittently fasting every single day, giving your digestive system a break and restoring your hormones, restoring your body 
to a healthy weight. Speaking of restoring your body to a healthy weight, you know, I, you know, I'm a, a, a really thin, thin guy, and I've actually read a lot about intermittent fasting for weight gain when it comes to muscle gain because of the reason that it boosts HGH and testosterone. So you get into the uh, the bodybuilding world, and you'll even read about intermittent fasting. So by boosting HGH and testosterone, and along with the surge training, along with the ketogenic diet, the low carb paleo type, uh, low carb, low grain, real foods diet, you're going to lose weight and you're going to not only lose weight, but you're going to normalize to your ideal weight. And that's the most important thing because it's not about the way that you look. It's about your overall health. So stay tuned in the future. We're going to talk about intermittent fasting in a lot more detail. Look back on some of the past episodes and look into how you know your sugars, how you can decrease your sugars, how you can increase your fats. Look at what you need to be doing to manage your stress or if your adrenals could be involved in this. And as you're linking all these episodes together and all these you know pointers together, you're going to maximize your chances of having a healthy life right now and in the future and really being the strongest version of you. So go back and listen to past episodes, but also stay tuned in the future. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Taylor Crick, signing off for the Real Health Podcast. We'll catch you guys next time. Thank you for listening to the Real Health Podcast with Dr. Taylor Crick. This episode has been sponsored by realhealthresource.com, your go-to resource for everything health, nutrition, and wellness. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, please visit our website at realhealthresource.com.